Hello friends, welcome to this interesting case discussion on a one week old baby who is presenting to you in your a &E for this bilateral swollen lids with this discharge and you can see a lot of crusting there as well. You have a lot of difficulty in opening the lids. The baby is febrile, systemically not doing well. The first thing what you would do is you would want to talk to the pediatric a &E team to see what's going on and how to make sure the child is systemically getting better. But from an ophthalmologist perspective, the diagnosis to be ophthalmia neonatorum, also called as neonatal conjunctivitis. Very important, a classic condition which you'll be testing your exams. And if you're going to be a pediatrician or if you're going to be a resident, both in ophthalmology, in obstetrics or in pediatrics, you would have to know about this vision threatening and not just that, it's a life threatening condition as well. Now let us understand this diagnosis in detail. So this is going to be the picture of a similar baby who can present with this. You can see there's a common factor in all these three pictures. The first is going to be, there's going to be a, a bilateral lid swelling. You can see the lid swelling there and you can see this purulent discharge which is kind of closing the lids. This is a very classic picture of something which we will see in a minute but of course you might have known the diagnosis by now. But let's take step by step in our style. Ophthalmia neonatorum, we will cover this, com this comprehensive topic, the definition, the causes, the investigations and treatment. So it's easy to define what it is. It is a conjunctivitis happening in a neonate that is within a month. So we call it as a neonatal conjunctivitis also called as ophthalmia neonatorum. So what are the causes you can identify in these patients? So you can broadly classify into infectious causes and non-infectious causes. So amongst infectious causes, think of what possible organisms, what possible bugs can affect this, can cause this. It can be a bacteria or it can be a virus. So the bacterial infections are going to be one thing, viral infections. And what is a non-infectious one? It's going to be a chemical induced. That is, we are inducing the conjunctivitis. We, in the sense as doctors, we can induce a chemical irritation of the conjunctive because this is quite relevant and it is important to understand the history behind this condition. Now, what are the bacteria which can cause this problem? And what is the one virus which can cause this? So, two bacteria and one virus. The two bacteria are going to be Neisseria gonorrhoeae or gonococcal infections. Chlamydia trachomatis and herpes simplex virus. So Neisseria gonorrhea is going to be the most dangerous. Chlamydia is going to be the most common, right? All these three conditions, the Neisseria gonorrhea, Chlamydia trachomatis and herpes simplex virus are not just vision threatening, but they're also life threatening because they can cause systemic impact. And there is one more common denominator for all these three. What is that? Think the answer is going to be all these three are going to be a sexually transmitted conditions or sexually transmitted infections, which means that, like I said, it warrants systemic treatment and a vaginal transmission is going to be the reason why the baby contracts the infection or contracts the virus or the bacteria. And the treatment is not just for the babies. You have to treat the mothers and the partners as well. So this is going to be the most important slide, I would say, because knowing that ophthalmia neonatorum is not just an infection of the conjunctiva, but it is beyond that. It is a systemically worrying concern. It is a sexually transmitted disease, which means it warrants treatment beyond the babies, right? So which goes without saying that a cesarean section wouldn't cause this problem. It's mostly per vaginal transmission of the infectious organisms. Now, as a resident, you might have come across this table, which is giving a timeline of the onset of ophthalmia neonatorum can see the chemical conjunctivitis features on the top of this table being the earliest to present and that is the reason for that. Now let us talk a bit about the chemical conjunctivitis. In the early centuries, it was Carl Sigmund Franz Creed. We all owe to him because he was the big reason why many kids did not go blind because of gonococcal infection. Because what he did was, he found that by instilling silver nitrate into the conjunctiva, that prevented the infection of gonococcal infections. But unfortunately, it had a side effect. The side effect was to, it caused redness and watering in the babies within 12 to 24 hours. And that's why the chemical conjunctivitis features first on the list. Because in the past, that's what was a Creed's method, where silver nitrate drops were given as a prophylaxis against gonococcal infections. But nowadays we got better alternatives such as powder and iodine, erythromycin and tetracyclines. And this prophylaxis is different for different parts of the world. Sometimes in UK, we don't really go for prophylaxis, but in US, prophylaxis is mandated. Right. So now you know why chemical conjunctivitis features on the top of this table. But what follows next is the most important, the gonococcal infection, 
which is going to be like a sprinter. It happens fast, it finishes fast. So within the first week, you see an ophthalmia in a totem, always suspect gonococcal infection, which is very important to have in mind. On the contrary, its counterpart, chlamydia, which is a bacteria again, is going to be like a marathon runner, where it happens after the first week, around four days, but it lasts up to a month. So it can happen anywhere between after one week until a month. The herpes simplex virus somewhere falls in between that category within the first two weeks. So the easiest way to remember is gonococcal happens very fast. Chlamydia happens later but longs last and herpes simplex is somewhat in between. But please understand this is not hard and fast rule. Babies don't present by textbooks. Pathologies don't present by textbooks. You can have lots of variations from this table but from your exams perspective this is important to have in mind. Why I'm saying this is not very important from practical perspective is that no matter what baby comes to you with an neonatal conjunctivitis, we always test for all these organisms anyways. So we're not going to worry about that much, but to have a suspicion of what bugs or what uh, infections are causing when gives a very good idea for us to be more alert with regards to our treatment management. So now this is a better way of understanding the same table. So like I said, gonococcal infection happens within the first week the chlamydia is going to happen for a longer period of time. A herpes simplex is going to be somewhere in between. So a gonococcal is going to be a hyper acute infection. A chlamydia is going to be a sub acute infection. A HSV is going to be an acute infection. So now we have understood the chemical induced conjunctivitis. Now let us go in depth by comparing and contrasting the three important infections which cause this condition. The Neisseria gonorrhea, the chlamydia trachomatis and herpes simplex virus. Now let us compare all these three. So like I said, gonococcal is going to be the most severe, most common. All these are going to be STDs or sexually transmitted infections or diseases. All these three will have a systemic component together. Gonococcal is going to be hyperacute, chlamydia is subacute, herpes simplex is going to be acute infections. So if it's hyperacute, it happens all of a sudden and the intensity is so high that the conjunctiva secretes lots of pus. So it's called hyperpurulent. And this picture is classic of gonococcal infections. Hyperpurulent. Look at this, presenting with this lid edema, chemosis of conjunctiva, and there's a risk of corneal infection. This is the most important thing to have in mind. Gonococcal infections and Azeria gonorrhea is one of those organisms, one of those bacteria which can penetrate an intact corneal epithelium. It's another favorite exam question. What are the organisms which can penetrate intact corneal epithelium? This is the list. Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria meningitis. So both gonococcal and meningococcal infections, Shigella, Listeria, Haemophilus, and Corynebacterium diphtheriae. So all these organisms can penetrate an intact epithelium. Normally, you would need an epithelial defect to facilitate the entry of the organisms into the cornea. But for these infections, the epithelium can still be intact and still they can infect the corneas, right? And so because of this reason, gonococcal infections can cause high risk of corneal melt leading on to endophthalmitis or infection of the inner layers of the eyeball. The endophthalmite is what we call. And not just that, because of this intensive invasion of organisms throughout, the babies can have an orbital cellulitis picture as well. So that's the orbit and you got the eyeball there and you got the conjunctiva there, that's the cornea, that's you have the lids there and you can see uh, the conjunctiva lines the back of the lids and front of the eyeball. When you have an infection involving this area, you can have infection spreading to the lids, presenting as a preceptal cellulitis, and this infection can spread beyond involving the orbit, pressing as an orbital cellulitis, and from there, the infection can be transmitted all the way through the optic nerve, through, through the meninges, through the blood, can go to the brain, it can cause much more serious condition right? It can even lead on to sepsis and death of the baby. Coming to the ocular features of chlamydia, the chlamydia infections are going to cause a lid edema and the infections present with this velvety conjunctiva and what's to have in mind is uh, chlamydia infections, there is not going to be presence of any follicles. So usually you know that any conjunctivitis you can have papillae and follicles, right? But generally speaking in neonates, in babies, you don't see follicles because there is a delayed development of lymphoid tissue. And because follicles are nothing but hyperplastic lymphoid epithelium, the lymphoid tissues proliferate to have these follicles. So naturally you will not expect to have follicles in babies. 
a very important, very often asked question in exams as well. And now coming to the herpes simplex virus, as you all know, herpes causes a classic dendritic ulcers. So you can expect these micro dendritic ulcers, the branching ulcers on the cornea, and you can see some lid vesicles as well. So these are classic symptoms of herpes infection, herpes simplex virus causing conjunctivitis. So please understand these three important ocular signs happening in these three conditions. Now, like I said, the systemic involvement, gonococcal infections can lead on to meningitis, can lead to sepsis. Chlamydia is classically known to cause pneumonia. The herpes simplex virus is classically known to cause encephalitis. Okay. And what's to have in mind is it is the chlamydia serotypes D2K, D2K is going to cause this condition. And herpes simplex type 2 causes this condition. Right. Now, having understood the ocular features and the systemic complications, let us go for the examination management. Remember three S's. The first is going to be the slit lamp assessment. Very basic, very important. I know slit lamps are not always a luxury in many parts of the world, but when you have a slit lamp, which is a handheld slit lamp, it makes it much easier to examine the babies in detail. Right. Secondly, always stain the conjunctiva or stain the cornea with fluorescein to assess the corneal health. As you can see in this picture, after staining, you can see there's a staining of the ulcer on the cornea. And that can give us a diagnostic clue towards what could be the possible organism causing condition. For example, if it's going to be a dendritic pattern, it will be herpes simplex virus, which causes problem. The third S is take a swab, take a sample of what's causing that. So take a conjunctival swab and always send for PCR polymerase chain reaction because the PCR is the investigation of choice these days and PCR of the conjunctival swabs will pick up the diagnosis. As you can see, gonococcal infections, chlamydia infections and HSV. For gonococcal classic is we do a gram stain and the nasal gonorrhea is going to be a gram negative diplococci and the culture what was used historically is the chocolate agar or the Thayer Martin agar. Chlamydia infections we use GM sustaining to assess for the inclusion bodies because chlamydia infections are intracellular organisms. They can give these inclusion bodies and these inclusion bodies we will often see diagnostic in the conjunctival epithelium. Right? And historically we use McCoy cell culture for chlamydia. For herpes simplex virus we use viral cultures. But these are all going to be from an exams perspective. right? But practically we do a PCR being the investigation of choice. Treatment. When you think of treatment, obviously you will know that we should think of a systemic involvement for this uh, systemic treatment for this condition, but always start with the eyes, right? Most important is you have to give frequent cell and irrigation. You have to clean the eyes, wash the eyes, make sure the lids are not stuck. So thorough lid cleaning, gentle lid cleaning is very important. And you see, there are three causes for this of which two are going to be bacteria. So you can start off with a topical antibiotic. A baby coming to you with a conjunctivitis, right? Irrespective of whether it's a neonate or not. Any baby coming to you with conjunctivitis, a child even for that matter, always start on a topical antibiotic. And chloramphenicol is a quite safe treatment to start with. In some parts of the world, we give gentamicin, but chloramphenicol is a quite a, quite a safe uh, antibiotic to start with. For suspecting herpes simplex virus, especially from the characteristic appearance of lid vesicles, presence of like cold sores, like infections on the skin, and you see a dendritic ulcer on cornea, you're suspecting herpes simplex virus and start the babies on topical antivirals such as GAN, Cyclovir, Gel 0.15%. But when in doubt, you can always start the babies on chloramphenicol eye ointment. Now comes the most important thing is the systemic management is the more important one. Of course, ophthalmologists are not experts in doing this systemic treatment. That's why what's important is to talk to the pediatrician and try to arrange a systemic management for the child. So gonococcal infection, the standard protocol says I am ceftrioxone. So in many textbooks you would see I am ceftrioxone, but that is a controversy. What is that? Ceftrioxone is contraindicated in neonates. This is from the BNF, the British National Formulary. Ceftrioxone, what it does is it is contraindicated in premature neonates, right? And also in full-term neonates because there's a risk of precipitation in urine and lungs. And it can cause jaundice, acidosis and many other conditions. So in, in essence, it is important not to use ceftrioxone in neonates. So if you come across this in your ophthalmology textbook, so please have in mind we don't use ceftrioxone. Instead, the drug of choice is going to be cefotaxim. So we use cefotaxim, not ceftrioxone. Very important to have in mind. Of coming back, 
for chlamydial infections, erythromycin is going to be the drug of choice. So we can give erythromycin syrup for the baby. Yeah, uh, this is the dosage. So forget about the dosage. The dosage can be different with, with, with different protocols and different conditions. This is the dosage taken from a particular textbook in ophthalmology. But please refer to your standard guidelines of how to treat and please talk to the pediatricians and they are the experts in giving this the correct dosage to the babies. Herpes simplex virus, AVA cyclovir is mandated. And it's very important, there's always a risk of encephalitis in herpes simplex infections. And that's why we have to do a PCR of the CSF to pick up this condition. These conditions are sexually transmitted diseases and which means it warrants treatment of mom and the partner. So just to complete, we have got these non-STD bacteria, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. And these are the gram-positive bacteria, of which most common is going to be a staph aureus. And these are gram-negative bacteria. So the classic teaching is, we give gram-positive bacteria, chloramphenicol eye ointment or erythromycin eye ointment, and we give for gram-negative, we give tobramycin or regentamycin. But to begin with, you can always safely start the babies on chloramphenicol. So to summarize, remember the timeline. Like I said, gonococcal infection is going to be a hyperacute, HS is going to be an acute infection, a clement is going to be a subacute infection. The second T is always test. Testing is the key. Taking a swab is going to be very important. And please do not uh, wait to take a swab. Before you start a treatment, take the swab, start the treatment immediately. So treat not just the eyes, but also the systemic condition. And the team approach is going to be the most important thing to have in mind because as an eye doctor, when you deal with a neonatal conjunctivitis, it is important to notify the pediatricians. Sometimes you will, you'll get a call from the pediatrician team as well to tell you about this condition. So always liaise with the multidisciplinary team, with your microbiology team to see what works the best for the child. And that's it. Thank you so much for your patience. I know it's been a while since I've made a video, a long video, to be honest. Uh, I hope this was clear and stay tuned for more updates. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.